We now look at the various components that comprise the Play Manager interface. Before we begin, it is worthwhile to mention that when you are running Play Manager, your system should be set to run in at least 800 by 600 screen resolution. If the system is capable, you should set it to 1024 by 768 or higher screen resolution. This will allow Play Manager to display the Play Surface window and the Object Browser windows simultaneously. The Play Surface is the main area of the Play Manager interface. This is where Play Manager shows your plays. Above the Play Surface is the main menu and the toolbar, and below is the Play Browser. Now let's look at some of the functions in the main menu. File New. This allows you to create new plays in the current playbook or brand new playbooks. File Open is used to open existing playbooks. Save allows you to save the current play or the entire playbook. You can also save the current playbook under a different name with the Save Playbook As command. Export Play is a very powerful function which allows you to move plays from the current playbook out to another playbook. You can print or print preview your plays via the File drop-down menu. The next area stores a list of most recently used playbooks. This is very handy for quickly opening playbooks. The File Exit command will terminate Play Manager. The Edit drop-down provides access to Undo, Cut, Copy, Paste, as well as some of the other Play and Playbook management commands. Notice to the right of the commands is the equivalent hotkey. For example, the Select All command can also be executed with the Control-A hotkey. The Action drop-down provides another access point to the functionality of the Play Browser. The View drop-down allows you to display and dismiss Play Browser, Object Browser, and Toolbar. You can easily display the preferences for them via this drop-down. If you have purchased the Internet Edition, the Publish Playbook menu item can be used to publish your playbook or practice plan to your team's Play Manager website, which will allow your players or coaches to view your animated plays or drills for free through their web browser. We now look at the Help drop-down. The first item takes you to Play Manager's online help. Next is Video Tutorials. When you are first learning Play Manager, you should definitely take the time to review the video tutorials. The Play Manager online menu item will open your internet browser and take you to Play Manager's website, assuming you have an active internet connection. Finally, Help About will display information about the current version of the Play Manager that you are using. The Object Browser is a pivotal part of the Play Manager interface. It contains several areas, and we'll discuss each of them now. The first tab of the Object Browser is the Actor's Properties tab. If an actor is currently selected, all the properties of the actor will be displayed and can also be changed via the screen. Next is the Surface Properties tab. Here you can change the background against which your play will run. You should decide on a background before you begin building the play. You can also select an inline style rink. The third tab contains the Playbook Browser. The Playbook Browser is a tool that allows you to manage your plays in your playbooks. Try right mouse clicking on a play in the list and experimenting with the various functions. The final tab in the Object Browser is the eChalk tab. This area allows you to manage all the eChalk and associated eChalk notes for the current play. Notice this particular play has two eChalks defined. Let us now turn to the Preferences form. It is here that you can customize the look and feel of Play Manager. The Actor Defaults tab lets you modify how an actor's path is shown when the Show Path switch is turned on. You can show it during design, which is the normal situation, but if you like, you can also show the path during animation while the play is running. The Path Length setting allows you to display only adjacent paths. This can be useful if your screen is getting cluttered with the path displayed everywhere. Note that these settings affect what a new player will have by default. The Player Name Font setting allows you to change the font used for labeling players. If you want to place heavy emphasis on one of the players in a certain play, make this font a little larger and perhaps bolder. The Image Defaults area lets you change what each of the actors will look like by default. By default, Play Manager assigns a blue directional icon to the player home actor. If your team has red jerseys, you can switch the player home icon to default to the red directional icon. You can also change the rotational attribute and the label Play Manager uses to describe each actor type. For example, you can change the term cone to pylon, if you prefer to use that term. The Surface Defaults tab allows you to change what surface a new play will be assigned. The Video Capture tab allows you to customize the text and the font used by the full screen mode video capture function. 
If you're making videos, this area of the system will be very valuable to you. Finally, there's the General tab. The defaults path setting is where Play Manager will begin looking for the plays when you execute the File Open command. The Constant Time Animation switch should normally be left on. This will guarantee that a play will run exactly at the same speed on any computer, regardless of the CPU speed. The Display Performance Indicator switch should normally be switched off. If you turn it on, Play Manager will display an FPS in the top left of the surface area in window and full screen mode while a play is running. If your FPS number is less than 20, you may want to consider upgrading your video card to achieve a better animation quality.